the Old Testament predicted that the Messiah would come from the line of David. And both Matthew and Luke provide genealogies of Jesus that confirm that he was a descendant of David, therefore a legitimate Messiah. He was a legitimate claimant to the throne of Israel. Each genealogy also brings out themes that are important to that particular gospel writer. Matthew's genealogy goes from Jesus to Abraham. Abraham, of course, was the father of the Jewish nation. And so Matthew emphasizes the Jewishness of Jesus. Luke's genealogy goes all the way back to Adam, the father of the human race, stressing then the universality of the gospel message. It's a message for all people everywhere. While the two genealogies, Matthew and Luke's, are basically the same from Abraham to David, from David to Jesus, they're different. Matthew follows the line of David's son Solomon, while Luke follows the line of Nathan, another son of David. So how do we account for two different genealogies? How do we account for these differences? Some argue that either Matthew or Luke got it wrong. They created or borrowed a genealogy in order to provide Jesus with a legitimate ancestry. Yet there are other possible explanations for the two different genealogies. The simplest solution is that we have genealogies of both parents of Jesus, Joseph and Mary. In this case, Luke would be giving us Mary's genealogy and Matthew gives us Joseph's genealogy. This actually makes good sense since Luke's birth narrative focuses on Mary, tells the story from his perspective, while Matthew's follows Joseph's side of the story. Matthew's narrative moves forward through the dreams that Joseph has. One problem with this suggestion, though, is that throughout his birth narrative, Luke stresses that Joseph is a descendant of David. In other words, he never mentions Mary's Davidic descent, so it would be surprising if he was giving Mary's genealogy. Another possible explanation for the two different genealogies is that Matthew presents a royal or legal genealogy, while Luke gives us a physical or actual genealogy. Matthew, in other words, lists the official line of Davidic kings, not Jesus' actual descendants. His point would be to show what's the legitimate line of kings and that David or that Joseph is related to that line. Luke, on the other hand, would be giving us Joseph's actual physical descendants. A third solution is actually a variety of other proposals that try to explain how Joseph could have had two fathers, and so two genealogies. Some, for example, suggest that Mary had no brothers to carry on her father's name at her marriage. So Heli adopted Joseph as his own son. This would then give Joseph two genealogies, his own genealogies and Mary's genealogy. A number of other more complex solutions appeal to the Old Testament laws of leveret marriage, whereby the brother of a man who died would marry his, his brother's widow to produce heirs for him. In the end, we simply don't know, but all of these represent possible, plausible solutions.